Welcome again. We are reading the parable of the lost son or the prodigal son. This is found in Luke chapter 15. We're reading uh, verses 11 right through to the end of the chapter. And again, this is a very, very blessed portion of Scripture, very awesome por por portion of Scripture. We're going to get right into this. Luke chapter 15, verse 11. He said, this is Jesus speaking, A certain man had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me a share of your property. So he divided his livelihood between them. Not many days after, the younger son gathered all, his, all of this together and traveled into a far country. There he wasted his property with riotous living. In other words, the son took all of the money and took all of the possessions that God, or not God, but his father gave him, and, uh, and he wasted it on a very careless lifestyle, a very sinful lifestyle, if you might put it that way. Verse 14, when he had spent all of it, there arose a severe famine in that country. Oh, God always uses, you know, the adverse circumstances to bring you around, doesn't he? And he began to be in need. See, when, 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 you're, when all is going well with you, oh, well, it's so easy to just kind of forget about God and forget about righteousness and forget about humility and to get proud when all is going well. Well, you know what? A lot of times God has to send a great famine or destruction upon the land to, uh, to wake people up. Verse 15, he went and joined himself with one of the citizens of that country, and he sent him into the fields to feed pigs. So now here we got this guy who started out really well. He, he was with his father. He, everything was going well. And he apparently, and this is what a lot of people do, they think that, well, you know, things would be better away from home. If I can get my father to give me some money and I'll go, I'll go away on my own and do my own thing. And that's what he did. He went and he did his own thing and he, he lived life the way he wanted to live it. But I tell you, it wasn't wise way to live it at all. It was a quite a foolish thing to do, to live life in a, in a sinful way and in a way that's contrary to the way he was raised. Uh, in a way that he knew was wrong because I'm sure his father told him that, that that kind of living is wrong, but yet he did it anyway. God sent a famine and uh, there was a great need in the land. And so he was, he was basically, he started up here and he got knocked down to about here because um, now he's, um, he has to feed pigs to survive because the famine is, uh, is so, uh, so severe and, and he has spent all that he had. He spent what he needs, uh, you know, all that he had, uh, that was given to him by his father. He spent everything. He just wasted his money. Verse 16, he wanted to fill his belly with the husks that the pigs ate, but no one gave him any. So now he came from about here and now he's down to here. He's on, he's right down flat on his face now because now he's looking at a bunch of unclean, filthy pigs and he's saying, these filthy, unclean pigs are getting it better than I now. Their life is better than my life right now. Verse 17. Isn't it interesting how God uses circumstances to drive the pride out of you? Verse 17. But when he came to himself, in other words, before he wasn't even, he didn't even think right. He wasn't thinking right at all. Then he came to himself and he said, in other words, he realized, uh-oh, reality struck, struck him. Reality sunk in. Uh-oh, look at me now. Look at how good I had it with my father. I thought that when I was with my father, I, you know, it wasn't all that great back then. You know, I, I couldn't do this. I couldn't do that. I couldn't go here. I couldn't go there. I, didn't, uh, I couldn't do what I wanted to do. I, I know I had secret desires to, to do this and do that and do things that I knew that, that my father told me was wrong. But then when I went out and I did it, God struck me down with adverse circumstances. And now... He comes to, comes to himself. 
and reality struck him. Now I'm worse than a pig. The pigs who are, they're just given basically trash to eat. And I wish I had that, that they have. They, they have better food than I got. So again, verse 17, when he came to himself, he said, how many hired servants of my father's have bread enough to spare? And I'm dying with hunger. Hunger. Hmm. You know, food and, and immoral living is always tied together. You got, you know, uh, the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, they said that uh, they had the abundance of bread there. The abundance of bread. They didn't, they didn't have any need. It says they were like the garden of the Lord. It was so plush and so prosperous and, and so wonderful to live in. But you know that breeded so much sin. In the same way here, God used hunger, a famine, to drive this man to his senses. And it says in the scriptures, by the way, in the book of Revelation, God again in the future will use famine again to, to really drive the pride out of people because it says that uh, there will be so much uh, famine, basically, that a, a loaf of bread will go for like a day's wages or something like that. You know, it says that in the book of Revelation. It's just horrendous. It, and, and it's coming. Uh, it's still coming. Verse 18. I will get up, says the son. I will get up and I'll go to my father. And I will tell him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I am no more worthy to be called your son. I'm no more worthy to be called your son. I've made such a fool of you and a fool of myself. And I've done such foolish things and made foolish decisions. Don't even call me your son anymore. I know I'm not even, I shouldn't, I shouldn't even be called your son. You're, I thought that you were, uh, I didn't think you were such a good man, but now I realize you were a very good man. I'm not worthy to be called your son. Make me as one of your hired servants. Make me as a slave. I'm not even worthy to be called your son no more. Verse 20, he arose and came to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was moved with compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. Now, notice this. His father didn't go chasing after him until the son repented. The son repented. Once again, it doesn't just mean feeling sorry. It means actually turning and changing. The son was doing things he shouldn't have been doing in a different country. And he repented. And he literally repented and turned around and came back to his father. So his father, after he repented saw him and was moved with compassion, fell, uh, ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, bring out the best robe, the best robe, and put it on him. Put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet. Bring a fattened calf and kill it and let's eat and celebrate. For this, my son... He still calls him a son, was dead. Dead meaning he was spiritually dead because he was living in sin. He was dead and is alive again. He repented. He came back to righteousness. He was lost and is found. Then they began to celebrate. Now, verse 25, now his elder son was in the field and he came near the house. He heard the music and dancing. He called one of the servants to him and asked what was going on. He said to him, he said to him, your brother has come and your, and your father killed the fattened calf because he has received him back safe and healthy. But he was angry and would not go in. Therefore, his father came down and begged him. Now, isn't this interesting? It's the elder son, the oldest son, the older son. We see this pattern throughout Scripture. We see it with Cain and Abel. We see it with Eliab and David. We see it with Esau and Jacob. You know, we see it with uh, Ishmael and, and Isaac. Okay, we see it in many different uh, examples. Why is it that the older son gets jealous and in spite does things to, you know, just out of jealousy and spite? Okay, so this, uh, this, this older brother, verse 28, he was angry. 
out of jealousy and would not go in out of spite. I'm not even going to go in to join their, their festivities. I'm protesting. Therefore, his father came out and begged him. Verse 29. But he answered his father, Behold, these many years I have served you, and I never disobeyed a, a commandment of yours. He, he obeyed all of, all of his father's commandments completely. He was a very obedient son. He didn't, do it. he didn't disobey at all. But you never gave me a goat, not even a goat, that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this, your son, came, who has devoured your living with prostitutes, you killed the fattened calf for him. Verse 31. He said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. Wow. That's awesome. In other words, you have always had it so good all along. You've had it so much better than your younger brother all along. You have been blessed all along, but your younger brother went and died. Your younger brother went and, and did foolishly while you lived in wisdom and all along. You had everything you wanted basically all along, and yet you didn't even realize it. You didn't know how good you got it with your father. Verse 32, but it was appropriate to celebrate and be glad for this, your brother was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. What a powerful, powerful story that Jesus tells here. May every one of us learn from this. We learn a lot of things. We learn the foolishness of the younger son who took the money from the father and went and sp spent it foolishly. We learn how God sent a famine in the land and drove basically this, this son to the end of the rope. Okay? where he was in a position where the pigs were getting better, uh, having a better quality of life than him. And he decided to repent. We learn the compassion of the father, who even when the son was at a distance, the father still ran and embraced him and kissed him and welcomed him back with open arms. We learn how the older son was jealous as so many other of the older brothers are in other parts of scripture and other stories. We learn how the older son was foolish in his own way because he didn't realize how good he had it all along. He didn't realize that he had it so good. And you know, there's, so, there's this old saying, and I know many of you have heard it before, if not all of you have heard it before. As you don't know what you've got until it's gone. The older son didn't know what he had. He didn't realize how good he had it. So let all of us always bless God and always be thankful and grateful. Don't be an ingrate. Don't be ungrateful. Don't be complaining about things. Don't be thinking, hmm, well, you know, I think, I'll ha I think it's better. The grass is greener on the other side. I'll go over to the other side. Always remember, you always have it the best at home. You always have it the best. Even though you don't think it, when you're at home with your brothers, with your family, with your father, you have it so good. And some of you, maybe you are in the prodigal position right now. Maybe you've, lo you've left the home of your father. Maybe you've left your home of your biological father. Maybe, maybe you've left the home of your heavenly father. Maybe you used to be good and righteous in the sight of God, but then you slipped into sin. Maybe you were raised right, but you have foolishly, like a fool, gone your own way. And God is driving you to the end of your rope. And now you're in need, in so much need. You're looking back and you're thinking, boy, I didn't realize how good I had it. I had it so much better with 
with my father. I had it so much better back in those days. I want, I want to go back to those days. And this is what happens also when someone in the family or a friend or a family member passes away. You look back and you think, you know, it wasn't that bad after all. It wasn't that bad after all. If I would just have one more minute, if I would just have five more minutes with my loved one, I would give everything to have five more minutes with my loved one. Because now they're dead and I can't talk to them. I can't express to them how much I love them. I can't serve them. My friend, do not overlook that you do have loved ones still alive in your life whether it's your parents, your family members, your friends, always, always hold it dear in your heart. Serve them now. Spend quality time with your family now, your friends now, because tonight you may not have them. And you may look back and think, you know, I wish I would have asked them this question. I wish I would have asked them that question. I wish I, could have, I, I wish I knew this from them. I wish they would be able to tell me that. No more. My friend, life is short. Make the best of it in the best way. Not in the foolish way. A lot of people say life is short, you know, live it up kind of thing, and they just go and they live like the prodigal son. Don't live in the foolish way of living it up, and you think you're having fun, you think you, you think you're everything's going good, you think you're free and happy. You don't know. Just down the road, God is going to pull the rug out from underneath your feet, and you're going to end up flat on flat on your face. Don't ever forget. Don't. Ever forget to be grateful for all that you have today. The people in your life, what you have today is something that you might not have tonight. You might not have tomorrow. So bless God and be thankful. Be in prayer. Humble yourself. Humble yourself, I say. Admit your sins. Don't justify them. Turn from your sins. Don't wallow in them. Hate your sins. Don't accept that which God absolutely detests. You want to be right with God. You want to do your best to do your best in this life. Always be grateful and thankful for what you have. Never forget. If you are the oldest son, if you're like the oldest son in this story, Always remember, you've had it so good all along and you didn't even realize it. May God use the story and burn it deep within your mind. Burn it deep within your soul. Burn it deep within your spirit. Let him, let him take this story and the morals of the story and the lessons we've learned about the story we've talked about and brand it into your mind, into your spirit into your soul. Never forget it. May it change your life. In the name of Yeshua. Thank you.